Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick and today we are doing IXL X8 which is finding the probabilities using two-way frequency tables. So hopefully you've gone over two-way frequency tables in class. If not you can find a lot of YouTube videos or Khan Academy articles or whatever you need on the internet that will explain them to you pretty quick. So I'm going to do a few example problems here and we'll be done. So this first problem says a health instructor surveyed all of his students and tallied the results. The first survey question asked, do you adhere to a vegetarian diet or omnivorous diet? So do you eat only vegetables or do you eat both vegetables and meat? The second question asked, if you were to buy a pet today, what animal would it be? What is the probability that a monthly or a randomly selected student would buy a dog and adheres to an omnivorous diet? And so we are going to reference our table here and we're going to go to the cell that both references uh, would buy a dog and adheres to omnivorous uh, diet. So we'll go to dog, so uh, right here, and then to the omnivorous diet, which is right here. So five, so five students would do both a dog and an omnivorous diet. So it's going to be out of five. So then how many students are there total? Four plus five is nine. 9 plus 3 is 12, 12 plus 5 is 17. So out of 17 total students, only 5 are going to choose both a dog and an, an omnivorous diet. So that's going to be 5 over 17. We cannot simplify that any further, so we will confirm. Okay. A creative writing class compiled a list of their favorite superheroes. They listed each superhero's superpower and personality flaw. What is the probability that a randomly selected superhero can fly and is forgetful? So we'll go to fly and forgetful. So that number is going to be five. Okay, so five all over. And how many total students? We have uh, five plus four is nine. Nine plus five is 14. And 14 plus three is 17. So the same answer as last time. Go figure. Okay, so these are pretty simple. I'm going to jump a level. Again, jump a level. Okay, so now we have three here. What is the probability that a selected bow tie is designed with swirls and is made of cotton? So swirls and cotton is going to be seven, and we're going to total everything up. So two plus five is seven, seven plus seven is 14, 14 plus seven is 21, 21 plus three is 24, and 24 plus four is going to be 28, so out of 28 total. And can we reduce this down further? Yes, we can, we can divide both by seven. So seven divided by seven is one, and 28 divided by seven is four. So it's one fourth. Okay, you get the idea, I'm gonna jump. Okay, so uh, we're seeing the problem here and it has four, uh, call, uh, four rows right here. And the difference with this problem is the word or, okay? So let's read uh, just this bottom portion and kind of skip the story. It says, what is the probability that a randomly selected contestant will not score exactly 80 points or is not from Brazil? The difference between these, uh, uh, some of these problems is the use of and and or. And so we are going to uh, look at this table here and it says exactly 80 points, so 80 points, or not from Brazil. So we'll do uh, exactly 80 points. No, hold on. So it says, what is the probability that a randomly selected contestant will not score exactly 80 points or is not from Brazil? So either one. So let's look at all the students that uh, did not score 80 points. So that's gonna be all of these right here. So 12 plus eight is 20, 20 plus 15 is 35, 35, plus 15 is going to be 50, and 50 plus 8 is going to be 58. So I'm going to write down 58 here. So 58 of the students did not um, uh, did not score 80. Then it says, or is not from Brazil. So either one of the cases can be true. So either they didn't score, or uh, they're not from Brazil. And so we see uh, that all these students didn't score 80. Now out of our 14 that are left here, what number uh, is not from Brazil, because we can add that in. Well, that's gonna be the seven right here, right? The students from Argentina are not from Brazil, and so that is going to be included. So we're, what is 58 plus seven? That is 65. 
And so 65 students total, so all of these plus the seven, um, are either did not get 80 or did not, uh, or are not from Brazil. And think about that for a sec, the difference between and and or. And would imply that both qualities have to be true. So um, that means it would, it would isolate everyone away from Brazil. You could not be from Brazil. So it would only be 12, 15, and zero because not from Brazil and not 80. But since we're doing or, it includes a much larger group of people. It's a lot less selective. So not 80 or not from uh, Brazil. So it's gonna be everyone here. So when you're doing these questions, keep in mind, uh, or when you're doing these questions, make sure you are, uh, no. When you're doing these questions, just keep in mind what they are asking. Are they asking for an and between the criteria or an or? Those are very key words right there, and or or. So we have 65 total um, students that um, did not score 80 or not from Brazil out of how many? Well, if all of these were 65, and then we just have seven that were, um, I'm gonna add a seven to the 65, and that is gonna be 72. So out of a total of 72 students. So there's 72 students total. 65 of them either did not score 80 or are not from Brazil. I'm gonna click Submit. There we go, okay. Uh, this is another or problem, so I'm gonna do this one. So what is the probability that a randomly selected banjo is 50% off or does not have four strings? So both criteria can be accurate. They do not have to be together. So let's look for all the students that, or not students, let's look for all the banjos that are 50% off. Um, so we'll go here and that's gonna be 11, 11, and 13. So 11 plus 11 is 22. 22 plus 13 is going to be 35. So 35 total banjos are 50% off. Okay, or does not have four strings. So everything um, outside of the four strings, we're also gonna count in there. We already counted all of these. And so the only uh, piece of data we have not counted are these two little boxes right here that uh, are not four strings. So 13 plus five is 18. And 18 plus 35 is going to be a total of 53. So 11 plus 11 plus 13 plus five plus 13 is gonna be 53. Because again, we're just looking for either 50% off or not four strings or 50% off or has five strings or six strings. And we can't double count, right? We can't go 11 and 11 because it's just one item. So it's just something that fits all the criteria there. Okay, so we have 53 total between all of those. And then out of how many total options, well, we know all these are 53, so 53 plus 13 is going to be 66. So out of a total 66. So out of our 66 options here, 53 of them uh, either are 50% off or do not have four strings. So that's gonna be our fraction. And can we simplify that from there? Um, And can we simplify this fraction? Not really, 53 is, is prime, so we're gonna leave that alone, okay? And so you get the idea here. So I'm gonna jump to 89. Okay, we're back to an and question. What is the probability that a randomly selected snake is one foot long and is not red? Okay, so one foot long and not red. So we have uh, one foot long and not red, so um, anything that is red is off limits, so these two we cannot count, and anything that is not, or anything that is uh, not one foot is gonna be off limits, so all of these are gonna be off limits. So we're just looking for one and uh, not red, so uh, eight plus 11 plus zero plus five is going to be all of our possible solutions. So eight plus 11 is 19, 19 plus five is going to be 24, Okay, and then how many total? Well, if all of those are 24, 24 plus seven is gonna be 31. 31 plus 15 is gonna be 46. 46 plus 13 will be 59. 59 plus 10 is 69. 
69 plus 10 is 79, and that should be it. So out of 79. And can we reduce that down any further? No, we, not really because of the 79 there. So we're going to submit it as is. Okay. And these questions don't really change, and it will not let me go any higher. So this is where I'm going to end the video. Take care, study hard, and I will see you next time for the next IXL tutorial video. Goodbye.